fucking similar up here. Okay. Um, So just because SPL is quiet doesn't mean there's not a ton of conversation going on. They've uh, to limit the distraction for the pilots and the folks figuring this out. They've they've uh, gone off the headsets, but there's an active debate about the different scenarios here. I think grabbing it with the portman nip and cutting with the right is still. Uh, the way we're trending. Yeah, we're hauling up at the moment. Yeah, and to add on to what uh, Jason said, we have turned off questions on the website for now. Um, so just hang tight, you guys. Uh, we're gonna try to get this figured out. What's wrong with this?
We get a lot of questions during interactions about what if something goes wrong, and it's like you're seeing it right now, teamwork and uh, problem solving live. Yeah, we've got very, very capable operators and brilliant people on board. So the, you know, if we take the time to think it through, you know, there's there's a lot of good options, or there's a lot of options that we should consider. And uh, I can hear out of my right ear the pros and cons of. <laughs> each uh It's off the line. So sat feed three, sat feed two, sorry, is uh, the at Atlantic cam pointed up at the rope. And you, you could see previously all the debris in the water, which is being scraped off of this line that's been in the, the seafloor for an extended a period of time. Yeah. No, they're uh, they're coming up on the winch, and uh, I think they're debating it. I think that's the discussion. That's at Atlanta's forward camera. Yeah. So I think one of the complexities here is the Herc umbilical is uh, trying to manage that with the current and how we approach this is the, you know, what's kind of pushing the debate to potentially recover to the deck and then cut this
All right, so I got some hand signals from the third base coach. It, it sounds like the, the plan is we've been coming up on the winch to attempt to get the line in a little bit more vertical orientation, which may be easier to grab for the vehicle. Um, that looks like it's been moderately successful. And so we're going in for a second attempt. The scheme here is grab with port side manipulator, cut with right. The, like I said, the tensions on the wire have not been that significant. So whatever we're hooked to is not that heavy yet. And so we're getting there almost. There you go, Dan. Nice. All right, step one. So the, a good grip here. And then we're going to pilot getting a sense for the weight of the clump on the other side. Herc only has so much thrust, so kind of picking up the one of those, what is probably attached to some sort of weight on the seafloor. He's getting a feel for what that is now. All right, here we go. Let's get out of this. So that's like three quarter inch, one inch poly. Knife looks plenty sharp. All right, so at Atlanta's free and clear. We've still got the bitter end of one of those lines in Mongo. We'll be engraving that knife and giving it out as a prize at the end of the dive. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever had to pull out the knife and use it any other time? Uh, not while I've been on board, <laughs> but there's a reason why we have it, right? Yeah. <laughs> this has happened <laughs> it before. It came in very handy. Yeah. Kudos to Dan for, uh, yeah. And that's the other end free and clear. All right. So we're back in business. Yeah, so we're going to reset here a little bit and then uh, get back to it. He's got 
Okay, and for anybody who's watching, we have opened up the questions again after freeing Atalanta from a, a rope entanglement. So feel free to ask some questions. Back, <laughs> back again. <laughs> back in business. <laughs> After quite the adventure. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, Larry, do you want to give the viewers kind of a little summary of what had just happened? Well, we, we just saw some absolutely masterful piloting. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, uh, yeah. Atalanta got, got uh, hung up on a, a rope. Yeah. It's not totally uncommon. There's fishing gear and stuff that, that's around. Um, I have no idea. And. Um, we got, we got a lot of praise coming in for Dan, but yeah, I don't think no, he has that, his headset that, that on. That was yet. really, really impressive. An impressive yeah. bunch of piling. So he uh, maneuvered, and, and you know, I think the real trick is not getting tangled in the tether at the same time. And was able with one manip manipulator arm to, to grab the rope and put some tension on it, and the other, which he had grabbed the knife, but. The, the, the one tool on board, <laughs> the diver's knife, uh, which looked very sharp, actually, which is very good. Yeah. I uh, was able to just with a couple of swipes uh, cut it and uh, and let it run free. That's definitely one of the more impressive things I've seen in my life, just <laughs> in general. Yeah. So, oh, just a, another day in the office, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come up, uh, we're at about uh, 400 meters now. I think we'll, uh, we'll 
move back down, carry on the mission. And again, big, big, big thanks to Dan and some, some real piloting skills there. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Uh, viewers are saying kudos to Dan and uh, the pilot team for getting out of that sticky situation and not losing the knife. And not losing the knife, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was very nervous at that first transfer of the knife from uh, one manipulator yeah, that was, to, to, that was to scary. the other. And I said, oh, we, if we drop yeah. it there, we're, we're kind of... Yeah, polyline cuts well under tension, indeed. <laughs> Somebody commented, hundreds of billions of square meters of ocean and you snagged a two centimeter rope. <laughs> get a picture of where we where we are high drama on the high seas someone says Okay, and we're back in business. You got a lot of love coming in on yeah. online, Dan. Yeah, you can you can come down with us. Did we transmit all that out to the world? Oh yeah. 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 Uh, Jake Jason gave a, a beautiful commentary as it was going along. And oh, thank you, thank you for your patience. <laughs> that was a uh, Green River dive knife, by the way, made in New Zealand. Well, <laughs> part of that rope like it was butter. It, 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 it certainly did. looked sharp. That was impressive. Oh, uh, what great comments, Ali. What's let's uh, let's give the round of applause here for yeah. uh, ROV yeah. along with the rest of the internet. Yeah. Awesome job. Expertise pays off. Way <laughs> to go, Delta Dan. Yeah, we broke the Delta rule on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Dan. Beat myself up. Why didn't I see that rope? I flew right under it. It's crazy how it came out of nowhere. Uh, so we are um, we're transiting towards the next waypoint, uh, moving the vessel and uh, coming back down. We came up uh, 100 and some odd meters there. I don't know how this uh, little rope holiday affects our overall dive plan. But that's, uh, well, I think we can, we can probably paper. just uh, pick it up where we oh, left, yeah. avoiding ropes. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try to avoid that rope. So it's a All right, we got the bottom again. They were fun, though. 250 meters below. 250? Wow. <laughs> yep. He picks up a little, a a little before you do. There right? it is, way down there. <laughs> is that uh, too high for an orbit, is it? Yeah, it is. Roger, coming down. Yeah, we want to be like 50 to 30, and also we want DBL lock. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, let's see when we pick it up this time. Oh, no, you're fine. 20 meter delta while we're. I'll stay 20 ahead of you. In down 20 the whole time. I wonder what was on the end of that rope. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too. Uh, Just saying kudos to the person who sharpened that knife. <laughs> and uh, somebody the else. The Green dive knives are um, they're a serrated blade, a uh, serrated stainless steel blade. And um, that's the first time that knife's ever cut anything except a quarter inch rope when it came out of the package. 
Well, and they have a really thick spine, so they are indeed a dive knife. And um, one of the hard things about using a knife on an ROV is we often break them, so we break the blade. And where our manipulators are a little bit stronger than the average diver. And when I grabbed it there uh, to transfer it to the, the handshake, I was uh, concerned I would snap it. But we have a, we carry typically two knives on board just for occasions like this. So, so Dan, there's a question there about um, this is a problem with ghost fishing gear, and has this ever happened before? And I think yeah. uh, I think you, you, you've said it's happened many times before. So. Yeah, uh, we've been tangled up uh, uh, with a similar kind of rope, actually. Uh, I think uh, last time was uh, Santa Barbara somewhere, so shallower water, a lot more fishing. Channel Islands, yeah. Yeah, Channel Islands, and uh, some kind of old trap, old abandoned. Uh, like a lobster trap or something. So lobster traps, pond traps, you know, they're deployed with a somewhat heavier rope and a float. And, uh, so it is, it is a serious problem, this problem of uh, ghost fishing gear, not only from the hazard it presents, um, but, but also the fact that they keep fishing often. And, and yeah. I've also... Uh, We've brought up uh, fishing traps, anchor lines. A lot of times we can't get out of it, and we have to uh, take the hit and recover the whole, recover everything to deck, and which is always challenging because then you we have the danger of entangling the ship's uh, propulsion. You know, and we also, in, in this case, didn't know what it was attached to, and. and it seemed to be moving relatively freely as we were coming up, but at some point, if both sides were attached, it yeah, would it, 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 it just appears, stop. Um, I think we got hung up in it, and then it it came loose, and then uh, we were hung up again. So uh, typically, like when we're dragging around 50-meter oily cables and stuff on, on jobs like uh, the RCA or ONC, which is the cabled observatories off the mm -hmm. west coast, um, they get caught up in the rocks. So as you're lifting it up like that, it just snags around the rock, and that's enough to uh, stop everything. Keep it on the seabed. Yeah. That was that that did, didn't appear to be polypropylene, did it? That, that, was that more a nylon rope or something? Like yeah, that? almost like a yeah, like a. Nylon or cotton, something you would use on a pond trap or a lobster trap. They also, they those uh, that stuff falls off the back of vessels, you know, while they're transiting, or they lose them, or they just throw them over because they're no longer useful. But they can tend. You, you find some in some weird places. I think they float for quite a while before they sink. You see some nice ropes floating around. Yeah, once you get down on the ground. <laughs> so we are currently back, um, trying to uh, meet some of our objectives, and uh, the comment section are, is open, so you can ask questions or send us a message. I think a lot of people are just kind of catching their breath again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me included. Yeah, especially you. Preach, but, preach, yeah. yeah. Five uh, you were, you were so calm the whole time. <laughs> zero, two, zero. And the viewers liked uh, Jason's commentary there and walking us through what was going on. lucky and had some uh, favorable, just enough current to kind of help manage uh, Hercules Tether. Yeah, uh, as, as I was watching the operation, uh, certainly 
that was my biggest concern, actually, was what was going to happen with the Tev, because there was some kind of complicated maneuvers to try to avoid getting tangled in, in, in the tether, tether itself. Yeah, making it worse. I have, uh, over the years, that's why I was kind of not wanting to do too many things at once, because a lot of times we make it worse if you do too many dynamics. So a uh, question has come in, Dan, <laughs> if, if whether you see floating ropes in your nightmares. <laughs> yeah, the one of the scariest ocean creatures to me is the, si the long chain oh, siphonophores that we see. <laughs> and they always get me on the edge of my seat because they look like a they rope. They look like ropes. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and somebody's asking if Slomo wants one of those fancy dive knives now for emergencies, of course. Yeah, they're, not, they're not cheap. <laughs> well, worth every penny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that one was worth every penny. Yeah. yeah, I bugged Josh to buy some for years, and then uh, we were in San Pedro, and um, one of our neighbor tenants down there is a, um, he's a diver. And he, he also is building out the dive boats and stuff down there. And um, he had one on, he has a forklift that we borrow, a big forklift and stuff. Kind of a raggedy old diesel forklift, a big heavy 10 ton forklift, 15 ton forklift. But he had one strapped uh, to the steering column on the forklift. And he used it, you know, he's all the time doing rigging, moving stuff around. So. And uh, Josh spotted it, and I was showing it to him. And he was playing with it. And he said, "Oh, we gotta, we gotta get some of these." <laughs> and uh, about two weeks later, three brand new ones appeared. In the care package for the uh, uh, system. Larry, uh, viewers asking if we can give an overview or description of South Point Pinnacles. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> That, that's a really interesting question because I'm not sure. I'll, I'll give a little of the background. What we're doing on this whole expedition is reoccupying sites that were explored before, which is unusual for us. Usually we, we try to go into new areas, but we're, we're really trying to test out this uh, spectacularly new camera system. And so we wanted to go to areas where we knew there would be really interesting topography. And so uh, Jason and Dan Wagner and others uh, scoured uh, a bunch of the historical information on where uh, particularly the uh, Hawaii Institute Research Lab, Hurl, where their submersibles, Pisces, had made a number of dives or where other vessels like the Okeanos Explorer had made ROV dives and found really interesting features. And so uh, our first dives were on uh, these large columnar basalts, which are quite spectacular and quite exotic. And the second uh, set of dives um, is in a place that was described as the South Pinnacles. Now, the, that we're on the very southern, uh, southern side of um, the Big Island, uh, Hawaii. Um, and if you look at the overall seafloor topographies, there, there are two large seamounts, um, as I, I described both of them are kind of semi seamounts because one side <laughs> doesn't go down to a thousand meters, but the other side it does. Is. Yeah. So there are two large features there. And it's not clear to me whether that's what's being referred to as the pinnacles, because if we read the dive reports, the dive reports seem to describe some pinnacle like feature that they saw in the submersible. And they're not going to see an entire seamount, they're going to see a much smaller. Mm -hmm. Features. So I'm not really sure what they refer to. I, I like to think of it as those two seamounts, as the, as the, as the, uh, as the South Point Pinnacles. Um, but uh, I, I'm not. I'm not perfectly sure. But it doesn't matter because we yesterday had a, a really spectacular dive on uh, the steep side of uh, that seamount. We'll call that one of the pinnacles, and we had all of these outcrops of, uh, of lava flows. Um, that really stood out and had all kinds of crinoids and, and uh, life living just on the edges as they stood up around the, the ground that was lower. They looked like uh, roads sometimes. And, um, not, not that wide, they were sometimes two meters, three meters, four meters wide, but just would go on and on and on. And so that was quite spectacular. We never made it to, to the top of the ridge. And so this morning we started by going to look at the top to see if uh, there may be more 
life on the top because you get very fa fast currents there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, that often attracts much more life. And first thing we run into was this large, large school of, uh, of rat tail fish, which was quite, quite exciting. We haven't seen that much on the seafloor, but we're do what we're doing right now in our first run is uh, a mapping run with the uh, Norbit sonar, with the multi-beam sonar, so we can get a much uh, clearer picture of the large scale topography of the feature. So that's what we're doing now. Yeah. gives us kind of like a bigger flashlight, right, than just looking at it with Hercules. That's right. Yeah. It's a good way to describe it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, as, I, I was, as I've mentioned many times, light is what we're used to using to see things. Uh, we, we use in our eyes and our cameras, and they give us remarkable detail, but unfortunately light doesn't travel very far in the ocean, so we have to fall back on sound. And so we use these sonar systems now to give us a picture of mm -hmm. that with less resolution, right. but... Uh, more coverage. Yeah, and that's what you're seeing in uh, feed three that Manal just pulled up for us. Uh, is that mapping? So, Dan, did you say you're still having uh, trouble holding heading? Okay, that's okay. You're you're entitled right now. You can you can talk to anybody you want, <laughs> including yourself. So we got a question, and it's kind of related to one that we had earlier, right when the drama started. Um, it was asking how long does it take to get down to the bottom or to ascend. And then this one is, how long can the ROVs stay down? Um, yeah. Do they need to come back on deck to Sagan? recharge? Okay. Yeah, let's bring it. Let's bring it down. I'm gonna not put the next ship move in until we get set up for the actually start the survey. Okay, and we're we're gonna hold off for a minute in the discussion as they uh, approach the bottom. They're not gonna get as close this time, but let them get settled, and then uh, then we'll come back and and, and join. And I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Sounds interrupt good. their discussion at this point. Okay, so they're 60 meters off the bottom right now. Slow down a little bit there, right? How about 15 meters a minute, please? Okay, so with respect to uh, the ascent and descent, I think those are typically on the order of 20, 25 meters a minute is, uh, is the rate at which they ascend. So depending on how deep it is, um, if it's... Uh, well, uh, we'll keep the 20 meter delta there if we can. On full stick down there. So a thousand meters or so will take 40 minutes to an hour or something like that. And in terms of how long the ROV can stay down, that's a real advantage of an ROV. It, could, it can stay down uh, almost an unlimited amount of time. The power it gets is from the surface. Um, and so it's not, it's not like an autonomous... Uh, Where do you want to be, Chris? Maybe let's do 35. I'm getting good views at pretty close to here. Roger. An autonomous underwater vessel, minutes. which has batteries that let's are limited. See. It's uh, given us... So it can stay down. We often swath. have dives that can go on for days. I want to uh, uh, 
it's really the crew that'll get tired before yeah. the before the vehicle. Switch over to auto out here. I gotta do the double for the double tap bug. I'll come back up right. a few meters there. You can all stop, Ray. I'm gonna start a new survey. So we're going down the hill. You can see the hill up uh, above us in uh, Atlanta. So we're going to be careful here because we're going down the hill. So uh, we can't do. We we must maintain the delta now. So what the other one to watch there is your uh, altitude. It's going to come up a lot faster than normally. We're going up the hill, so you, know, you can be zero to plus twenty. Yeah. Now, if you're zero, obviously you're going to be in the mud or the rocks. But before we started all this, Dan, I was going to ask you that don't we typically work up a slope and, and what you have to do differently when working down a slope? Oh, uh, we'll be fine coming down the slope. Um, uh, you know, we're 35 meters up. So, and we do go downhill. I turn around and go backwards and uh, we get Atlanta out in the deeper water behind Hercules. So kind of we do the whole thing in reverse. Mm -hmm. Um, and I use Atalanta to kind of spot uh, the big obstacles, but it, uh, we don't really have good spatial awareness on this vehicle all the way around. So, you know, we kind of bump our way backwards down the hill, but, but it's, you know, it's got bumper bars and skids and protection. So as long as we're moving nice and slow, it's, my analogy is, you know, when you're pulling your boat up to the dock and you kind of bump the dock a little bit, you know, versus hitting the dock at 20 knots. It's right. uh, <laughs> or one, even one knot, you know. It's, right. You have all that mass, if it's not moving too fast, it just kind of stops and you see the camera kind of jiggle a little. All right, you ready to go, Dan? I am ready. Zero, three, five. Zero, three, five. The, the biggest one is the visibility, because when we're going backwards, depending on the on uh, what we're doing, you know, just we have all that debris in front of us from the thrusters. Yes, please, yeah. All right, I'm going to put the ship moving. Oh, that's an interesting sound. That was the radio, I believe. Yeah, someone is uh, pushing buttons on the radio. Hopefully not me sitting on it. Yeah. Uh, this one, if you touch this uh, focus here, that'll come. Yeah, we're we're bridge, out there bridge a little. Nav. So we're down four no, we're six good. meter we're four good. six zero meters uh zero three five point three knots. The motor's actually up because I've had them pinned. So. Zero three five point three knots. Yeah. Pain is good. Uh, should I click the button, the button button? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you ready to start? Yeah, the he, he's, he just put the move in. Okay, I'll give it a second to, uh... Yeah, it's going to take a minute for the swing to start or whatever. We only have, you don't have that much cable out. No, it shouldn't take much. So we're going to want to maintain that 15 to 20, um... Delta, which you'll find there, you're in, you're in between the bang on in between. And I'm going to, same thing we were doing before, right? So I'm going to click in uh, auto XY, as we call it on this system, which uh, lets the computer drive. And then we just kind of tweak, tweak the numbers a little. Flying by the mouse. Or the touchscreen, whichever you prefer. For me, the mouse, just because I'm lazy, I don't have to lean forward, put fingerprints on the screen. Uh, you know, I learned a new trick finally after all this time on the system. If I uh, engage auto XY and then I 
play with the joystick again, which obviously Robert knew he was chuckling because <laughs> uh, it's just finally occurred to me. Uh, how big a move did you put in? I, oh, an, an all the way move. Oh, wow. All the way to the next waypoint. So we aren't stopping and starting. So 400 meters? Yeah. So that's 51, 52. Okay, and so again, what we're doing now is we're staying uh, off the bottom, 30 to 40 yeah, meters off moving. the bottom. Should be 0.3 knots. To right. allow the multi-beam sonar to get a, a good overview of the topography as we start now moving down the I'd slope. I'd be curious to look at the uh, uh, plot juggler now. I can match DBL speed to ship speed. Yeah, you want that? Sure. I still got it. Pow. Dang, what is it? Wait, why isn't it not rolling it, running it anymore? Let me start it again. There's been an ongoing argument whether these velocity numbers are knots or meters. We're going to solve that argument right now. Chris has a, a very cool tool up here, uh, the same one he was using to look at the uh, DBL beams for you yesterday, Larry. And he's got hooks into all the nav sensors, so. Oh, yeah. Well, this is my nav solution. This is the few, the EKF output. All right. So this, uh, and this is in meters per second. So blue is forward, red is side to side. Right here. That's the DBL then, as you're honest. That would be, actually, that would be, that's exactly what we want to tune the PID loops. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> See that? Sine wave. I have heading, too, if you want it. Uh, yeah, we could try and do some on the, on the fly. It's much easier than looking at a needle and trying to count. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely wavy. Definitely wavy. What speed did you put in? I have 0.15. Yeah, so well, it's definitely waving right around 0.15. Uh, meters per second? Yeah. So, yeah. So there it know. is. Meters per second. Yeah. Of course it is. I always thought it was meters per second. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> no, sure. because so what we didn't realize, and Rennie and I have had this discussion many times, when we're doing the auto XY, uh, your joy gain affects the auto XY speed. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I just assumed. Yeah, I, and I wonder if this pulsing isn't what's hurting your... Because uh, the, the stern thrusters are probably not balanced perfectly. And if you're no. doing this surging, yeah. right, You could that could throw your heading off. Yeah, totally. I don't know. You can try turning the gain down a bit. Are you guys on? Crank the D, S lower the P. Chris, Chris and Dan, are you on SPL? Yeah. Uh, they I are. Am, yeah. Good, good. Okay, because... Um, Chris oh. is talking, but not listening. Well, oh. it, that doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. <laughs> Say again? No, no, I, I, I was just going to explain to folks you guys keep talking about DBL, and uh, I'm not sure if folks out there know that that stands for a Doppler Velocity Log, and that's a, another uh, acoustic uh, system, and uh -huh. it, it uses four... Four transducers pointed off in slightly different directions, and it bounces the sound off the bottom or some other scattering layer and measures the frequency shift in the return, um, what we call Doppler shift. It's like when you hear a train coming towards you or a train going away, you'll hear the, the sound shift. And so the sensor does that, and from looking at the return to, from the four different uh, hmm. Those are the numbers transducers that Robert has entered. That seems it can determine both the speed and direction that the vehicle is moving. For, let's turn. Let's go off SP also again. Roger.
Hey, Taylor Ann, do you have an ID for uh, all these little fish we keep seeing? Yeah, these are the grenadier fish that um, they were seeing schools of earlier. Oh, yeah. I didn't even, I don't think I really got a good look at them there at the end, but. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty spooky looking fish. Yeah. <laughs> Just but in time for Halloween. These yeah. are just individuals, not a not a giant swarm. Yeah, like not a giant before. swarm. Yeah. Have you ever uh, heard the book or seen the TV show called The Swarm? No. Well, it's really quite remarkable. It's a it's a book that was written in Germany. It's about that that thick, and it's it's all about the ocean and and hydrothermal vents and oh, it's wow. science fiction. But oh. it's, it, it's done very factually until they get to the fiction part. Okay, and, that sounds uh, interesting. It's really quite a remarkable, uh, a remarkable book. It was a bestseller in Germany. Oh, do you know? Do you uh, recall the author's name? Oh, I don't remember the author, but it's called The Swarm. I'm gonna look into it. That sounds yeah. like something and then, I'd and like. I think there were because I saw on uh, Lufthansa flight that there's a mini series that they turned it into. Some interesting comments. Uh, yeah, the um, they were. Uh, they mentioned that the longest dive was nine days. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, in 2021, I think they're referring to the part where, uh, to the time that uh, um, Hercules and Argus got separated from the ship. And yeah, teamwork. Yeah, it's all about teamwork. <laughs> yeah, this definitely looks like a book that I would like to read. Mm -hmm. So I will take that recommendation. Thank you, Larry. Somebody else was mentioning the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain. Are you familiar with that? Yes, yes. The Hawaii, the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain is mm -hmm. a large chain of, of islands that goes all the way starting what we talked about yesterday, Luihi, the one that hasn't appeared yet, but then the big island and all the way up the chain, and then it makes a, a turn, which indicates about 40 million years ago, the direction of the plate movement changed because the, all of them went over that, that hot spot. But I think that question had to do with the pinnacles, that they looked up mm -hmm. the south pinnacles. Yeah. And I don't think that's listed in any atlas. If you look at um, a bathymetric map and, and if it's detailed enough, if you go to uh, the JEPCO website, uh, that's a place where it has a fairly accurate bathymetric uh, map, the, kind of the best bathymetry we have of the, of the ocean. Um, just south of the Big Island, you'll see two small seamounts, um, and that's where that's where we're working. And yeah. as I said, I think that's what we're calling the South Pinnacle. Yeah. Th these are the these are the two seamounts we're working on. Yeah. And they're unnamed. They don't really have, uh, and they wouldn't be in any. We don't call them atlases. We call them gazetteers uh, when you describe the name. So. Uh, yeah, and that's about that's we're at 600 meters depth, so that's what they're referring to. So if you're just joining us, we are mapping um, these uh, South Point Pinnacles or seamounts, sort of, <laughs> sort of seamounts. Semi-seamounts. Semi-seamounts <laughs> semi um, to get a better idea of what uh, the terrain around here looks like at the, the temperature. And the, side, the side we uh, came up yesterday was remarkably steep, over 30 degrees, which is, yeah. which is really quite steep for uh, and these little white fish are the grenadine. They're keeping us company. Oh, here are yeah. fishing. The blue. <laughs> oh, I, th I thought they were just little, you know, these. There are quite a few of them now, really. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have a 
a large accumulation of uh, the rat tails now. Now if we can identify whether these are round nosed rat tails. That, that, yeah, it is looking very nice, Chris. You see this, Larry? Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, that's looking, neat, it's right? looking excellent, yeah. Yeah, but let's, this guy over here, we're getting mm -hmm. these big, like, right. and I suspect, sharp edges, laid over features. Right, I, I expect those are very much like the flows we saw yeah. we saw yesterday. Yeah. This will be, I'm really excited to compare this with what we see on the way back up. Mm -hmm. Should be really cool. And we should make sure on the way up uh, that we target that kind of ridge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that'll show right up in the Chimera maps. Yep. So uh, in feed three, you'll see the map that uh, we're creating. I don't know. I don't know that I don't know that we've accomplished anything, Dan. So we, we, we have seen to stepped into a uh, an accumulation of uh, the rat tails. <laughs> rat tails. Uh, Grenadiers, is that what they're called also? Yeah, a grenadier. Looks like we've got more blue here as opposed to the yellow and green we had before, which is deeper, right? What is your ping rate, Chris? Uh, we're at 2.8 hertz now. Okay. Yeah, but if you set the lower gate just right, you can squeeze, yeah, we can squeeze a little more rate out of it. And, and it's four, 400 kilohertz you're up right now? Yeah, 400 kilohertz. It has some other settings, but mm -hmm. uh, any anything other than 400 kilohertz is just not good. Yeah, in a... Uh, I shouldn't say in a funny way. It was probably thought, thoughtful of you. Um, having the curved array on the Norbert is is particularly appropriate for this kind of topography. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. And like I said, we have it mounted on the sort of on the side forward right. corner of the vehicle, mm -hmm. such that we can angle it slightly and survey. The the swath is so wide, we can right. actually survey beyond 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, so we can like look upslope and that sort of thing. So, um, so I've got a program coming up. Uh, next summer on the Odin, the Swedish icebreaker, where we're going to look at the, the front, the ice front. And the idea would be the same thing to use the Norbit with the curved yeah. array so that we can kind of get the entire ice front at once. Right. Yeah, I've used it in rivers and stuff where I can get the whole river in one swath. If you get like this nice bowl shape, mm -hmm. classic river shape, it's amazing. Uh, in, in the old days, uh, all the sonars were kind of barrel arrays. It's, it's, a, yeah. more, it's a more expensive way to do it. But then as they got better with beam forming, they realized they can make a flat array a lot cheaper. But uh, barrel array has some, some real advantages. I don't think I've ever seen so many rat tails. Yeah. Well, if, you, if when the when they first got to the first touchdown um, this morning, there were even more. But uh, I've never seen them so active either. They hey, Dan, why you let's do a slow step to starboard. Right. Uh, I'd like to center up on this feature a little bit. Well, they're all upset at the guy who uh, cut the line that uh, held, the, held the bait they were feeding on. Uh, we're looking at. 
10, 20 meters. All right. Like, like 20 is about, it would be good. I don't know if you got range on that without. I, I clicked in a 50 meter. Yeah, see, 15 would center you up with that Atlanta, so that's, that's good. I'm not sure if it takes it. Uh, it's kind of weird. I, I, I should probably, I'll just come out of auto, that's why I do it manual. I shouldn't be coming up. Yeah, just try to main, just maintain heading. That's the only thing that I, I only request that I'm, I got. I'm definitely not coming up. Oh, I know why I'm coming up. Uh, the, I'm in auto altitude following the bathymetry, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rather the maintain heading. What you almost want is like a a line fit on the on the Norbit trajectory that gives you All like right. a nice slope to follow yeah. and not follow every last rock. Although I guess the DVL kind of automatically does that, right? Because it looks it ahead does. and it looks it back, yeah. yeah. It averages out. It's got to be the general terrain coming up there. Yeah, we got we got this nice bowl here. connector issue that we had? Yeah, I thought we fixed this. No, okay. Got All right. it? Yeah. Uh, we have an intermittent connection here. Cut bad cable or bad connector. It's right at my feet, so I wind up. Yeah, that one didn't get crossed off the list. So you got a connector issue on this side too? What's that? You have a connector issue on this side also? Yeah, that's our uh, ROVs are constantly battling connections. There's a lot of them. Okay, I should be in line uh, with Atalanta there. Yeah, this looks good. It looks like we're going to drive out of this bowl, but that's okay. It looks like it goes off to the other other direction. There, I'll center on Atalanta. I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah, we should we should basically be following a saddle down. I think that's. Uh, do you want to? Would you want to be closer to the ridge, Larry, or do you want to be more towards the valleys? No, I, I think I think from from the mapping perspective, if we if we stayed in the valley and yeah, and, we get and, much better data, right, yeah, and captured the ridge, we'd be that's much right. Off. So yeah, I think this is good where we kind of have the ridge and the port side, but we can still see most of the valley. But I think it might shoot off. The problem is we can adjust a little bit if we have to start adjusting the ship's heading. It, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, well, we can't follow stuff that closely. Right. Do, we'll do what we can. And yeah. Really? Got it? This is so bad. I see. Uh, 
Yeah. Chris, do you have a waypoint beyond four, or is four the last? Uh, waypoint? five is the wet is the last one. There's one more. Yeah. This is where that super okay. wide swath Don't comes in handy. Cable. Check that out. Yeah, we're getting an awful lot of data for one pass here. You see? Yeah, I'm really impressed with uh, how fine scale it is, even though it's such a broad area that yeah. we're covering. Yeah, yeah each yeah, one yeah. of those cubes in there is a half a meter, so that gives you an idea wow. for scale. And when he puts it together later, it'll... it'll yeah, it will do a little, hopefully we'll do a little yeah. better than that. For our dive planning maps, I've been doing one meter grids. That's kind of good enough to pick targets and whatever. And then with a little more time, uh -huh. I can clean it up and do better. Can you do me a favor and run down to the uh, ROV shack and grab a radio? And uh, if we get wrapped around the axle here, I'll just have you pop out to the social deck. And there's a button right here that says enable or disable a remote. And you can flick that button one way until you have control of it out there. Yeah, in case it goes pear-shaped here and we've got to, you know, winch up. I had one. What do I do with it? There's not one in here. You for a radio? Yeah, we're having uh, this uh, intermittent yep. comms issue with our winch controller in here, so we'll... Um, I'm gonna have uh, somebody out on the Raya grab the a radio, right. and then she might have to uh, stay outside. Do her job from the uh, yeah. social deck. Yeah. yeah, she's got monitors out there, right? Yeah. Handy. I. Uh, I would like to come up a little more, but I don't want to go up too much more that, such that we lose DVL. Uh, I'm going to have to come up because uh, okay. I can't well, pay great. out on the winch. <laughs> That's good. Let's do that. Roger. I could, yeah, 40 meters, 50 meters, I could probably, I could handle. I mean, if we go to USBL, the map will take a hit, quality hit for a little bit, but it is what it is. It'll still give us insights into dive targets. Yeah. This is crazy how big, deep this thing is. Yeah, and this is something yeah, that you we, can could, see. we couldn't see before in the bathy, correct? I'm actually That's right. Oh, yeah, no, not even close. Yeah. So this I'm entire... 60 meters there, you might lose it. On the bathy, this entire swath would be like two swells. Wow. So that's, wow. the, that's the difference in resolution. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that really puts it into scale. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because they were, they, they might even be 100 meter cells. This might even, this might be closer to one, one cell. But yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. Look at these uh, super linear features here. Yeah. I thought they look kind of like artifacts, but they're not. If they're... Uh, there were occlusions because the multi-beam couldn't see down the ridge, but that means that there's a hard edge there. Crazy. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, so we, we should keep an eye out on the distribution of these because uh, you know, we, we do need to be on the deck at, at 20 hundred, and we want to have enough time to make a, a good run near the bottom examining some of these features. Um, so sort of as we get deeper, we're seeing less interesting stuff. We may want to just say... Oh, yeah, may want to call it. Yeah, let's yeah. call it and turn around and uh, start, Well, that's, start yeah, already up. that's a pretty nice-looking place to explore, right? I, I agree. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, we got yeah. these linear yep. things. We got yep. this big big cliffs here. Yep. So I mean, this is, this is the sort of thing where we were seeing the basalt columns and stuff. Right. I, I suspect so. That's, I, I think that's what that is. And yeah. So I'm, th I'm thinking, uh, you know, get to waypoint four. How much, how much longer to waypoint four? 
Uh, we're only 100 and the ship's only 150 meters from waypoint four, so, it, so it's, it's maybe worth going a little further than yep. that. Just because while we got the swing going, it's like, mm -hmm. might as well get some, but... But yeah, it's your call when you want to... Yeah, well, let's just, see, let's just see what it looks like. Mike, if it totally so you Peter's didn't though. come back with a radio? Wait, you're lo looking for radios? Yeah, do, you, do we have any radios in here? There's uh, go to the, in the data lab, there's one next to the double monitor. Oh. I can go Video get one if you work. want. Yeah, uh, can this we is data. radio? Or maybe somebody in the lounge can run over if anybody's listening in the lounge. Can you go get a radio from the data yeah, lab? Yeah, I think we got the one. Channel on this thing, so. huh? uh, it's the knob on the top. I think we may have. It's on video channel, not. Check one, two. Check one, two. Yeah. You need... No, I think the knob on he the has one now. Channel, okay. I think we're channel two. Are we good? I can't get either one of Uh, negative, Mike. Negative. We're uh, in the middle of a survey. In fact, I'm going to pay out. What's that? Yeah, we're having the same issue with intermittent cable, so I was uh, monkeying around with the cable here and getting it to where it'll actually work. Uh, we now have a radio, so... Uh, if it continues, we're going to uh, operate from the social deck. We got a, you see this big wall here? Or are there, I forgot, I don't need a radio. I have a, I oh have yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, you got. But you need one. Uh, it's on channel. So the down button will be channel one and you can talk to me on the comms here. Hey, Larry. Chris, go you ahead. see this big old yeah. cliff here? Yeah. It's hard to see because we yeah, kind of went included. right down the... Yeah. 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 But oh. uh, <laughs> Here's Jason yeah. to the rescue. He's Jason got a... comes in with a radio. <laughs> yeah, that... Yeah, that... Yeah. It'd be really nice to turn around and see what the front of that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. that so unfortunately, so that's... It's quite a bit away from where we yeah. are now. But, uh, but about the only thing we could do is do a quick pivot and get it, but I think that's going to make a mess of things. But, it's but, probably may not but maybe on the way back. We yeah. Can, oh, we yeah, sure. We, we can plan, we, a, we can yeah, plan we a path. Can, we can pop up and do a nice survey of it. Right. Yeah, and, yeah set up properly. Yeah, and especially yeah. now we know where it is, so mm -hmm. we can. Exactly. No, I, I think what, what, what I, I really like is I think we're setting a precedent for how to use the Norbit to, yeah. pl to plan a dive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that precedent. Yeah, so for those from the outside, what, again, what we're doing is a mapping run. Um, we're flying no, a little high off breaking. the bottom, so that's why you're not seeing anything <laughs> in the bottom. But if you look at uh, yeah, you can, uh, feed three, we're coming down. you're now seeing a cross-section of what the sonar is seeing. Sh shallow off on your left side, looking at it, and then getting deeper to the right side. On, and when Chris uh, pulls that screen out of the way, you'll see the, the cloud point there and yeah flip if chris backs out backs up a little zooms out there you go you, you can, can see that we've actually come down a, a valley and we're covering what 150 meters 200 meters uh, i think we're even more than that now we're, yeah, we're the rov yeah, is 60 is, meters altitude this this edge over here is 200 meters away wow. this edge over here is 100 meters away so, so we're getting 300 me a 300 meter wide swap that's right so we're wow. covering all that at once yeah, um, and getting a, a very detailed and picture. getting yeah, getting decent data. Yeah, each each one of those little uh, cubes, that the voxel is, as uh, Chris calls them, which is a three-dimensional pixel, represents 50 centimeters. So that's the detail uh, of resolution we're getting with with yep. uh, that sonar, uh, because it's so close to the bottom. It's absolutely wild, and and, yeah. and we're going to use this now to plan our dive coming back uphill. And what you can see is that big gap. If Chris points to that gap, maybe. Yep. What that is, is a, a vertical wall, a near vertical wall. 
that uh, Sonar wasn't able to pick up because it was so steep. And so hopefully on the way back, we'll be able to ex explore that vertical wall yeah. and then look at these ledges that we see. All those little black areas yeah. represent uh, little ledges. Yeah, you can kind of think of like if we were cast a, if we were to shine a flashlight on this, if you shine it from the wrong angle, that whole surface will be in shadow. Right. That's basically what happened. And you see we have that in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. All of these tears here are where uh, where there were shadows from the multi-beam. Yeah, so if we look at the map from the angle that the multi-beam, that the sonar saw it from, you can see most of them are gone. Right. But if I, we look I, at them from another angle, there they are. And that's the problem. They're gone uh, because yeah. the sonar couldn't see it. We call yeah. that occlusion, Yep. which is just a fancy word for mean being blocked. Yeah, actually, this 50-meter altitude is working pretty OK. Yeah. It's varying quite a bit. It was 60, now it's 56, but. Yeah, I might I might have you come down just a bit, just because I'm worried about DVL lock. But but honestly, it's, it's behaving. So maybe let's just bring it down to 50 instead of, or set your target to 50. Right here. Yeah, I'm going to come down about five, <laughs> five meters or so. And see, this is on the. I wonder if I can cheat a little. Get, yes, I can cheat. I love it when you can cheat. Get a few more degrees on that side. Yeah, see, we should we should angle the Norbit at 15 degrees. It would allow us to do this and look up to the left side. You know what would be really cool? To move Norbit instead of cameras tonight. <laughs> to what? Yeah. <laughs> That would just that would make my day. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Tell Jonathan, sorry, no, no. Yeah, you see, it it, it runs out of steam much past 180 so degrees. Why, why, why is that? Because uh, the, the 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 I mean, the barrel array only goes through like 100 and <sighs> what? It only goes through maybe 140 degrees. Right. And then it beam steers the, the last couple to, degrees, yeah. and it just can't go that because the the sections that are the sections of the array that are orthogonal to the to yeah. like 180 are very small, right? Yeah, there's, like there's, you can't steer it that far. Right. There's right. not there's not enough array. To, yeah, to, to yeah, but there's not much reason to we that 15 degrees we basically get for free because you can steer past 180 just a little bit, and uh -huh. if we steer past 180 on the on the starboard side, we just see the foam pack. Right. So we get the f first 15 degrees we get kind of for free. Uh -huh. And we can increase our swath width if we're on the, if the slope is on our left side, on our port right. side. Right. And, and the difference with the flat arrays, they have to start steering right away. Every beam is steered except for the, the nader, the straight down beam. And so they run out a lot quicker. And so yeah. if, you, if you really want to look at walls and things like this, having this barrel array is a, is an advantage. There's a comment that uh, all the sonar talks reminding uh, the person of when they get to work with synthetic aperture radar satellite imagery, especially regarding the shadows. And that's a that's an interesting point. I mean, it's it's absolutely analogous. Radar and sonar are very very similar, except mm -hmm. radar is using electromagnetic rays uh, waves, and sonar is using acoustic waves. So the the basic principles of physics are the same. But the scale is very different. The wavelengths that the uh, electromagnetic waves are using are tiny, and that's why you can get such amazing resolution of uh, satellite imagery. Um, you know, it's, it's yeah. remarkable from a satellite that you can you can see cars and trees and people. Um, but we we have a much much more difficult time uh, in the ocean with sound waves because they travel so much more slowly. Yeah. And the wavelengths are so much larger, so. And and their beams go relatively straight. That's right. <laughs> well, they they have a bit of refraction too. Yeah, for the really long range stuff, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. for lidar, like you don't have to worry about it. No, no, they do. Really? They do. Yeah. Um, and uh, what what they <laughs> interestingly enough, they they correct for the refraction in the atmosphere using lidar. They they use a lidar. Yeah. That, right. That's pointed upward into the atmosphere, and they get. They get um, moisture content and and basically calculate what the refraction will be in the atmosphere. The question about what's in the water. Yeah, I, was, and it, and I think they uh, mean the grenadine. Yeah, I think, uh. yeah, they seem to be the fish that we first encountered. I can't guarantee they're the same ones, but the same type of fish. 
that we first encountered on the top of the seamount. These uh, fish are called ratfish. Well, I always call them. Rat tail. Uh, yeah, rat tails, excuse me. And uh, grenadier. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And Taylor Ann mentioned that the, they changed the name to Grenadier from rat tail because they were trying to get a commercial fishery for them and figured yeah. people would rather eat a Grenadier than a, than a, a rat, rat tail. tail. Yeah. But I don't eat fish, but yeah, if I were to choose between two names, definitely wouldn't want to eat the rat tail. But from, from, <laughs> what we, from what we read, the, the, they still didn't taste good, no matter what they were called. So. Yeah. Looks I like we have it. some smaller ridge features along this way, too. Yeah, it does. Oh, well, if you remember the the uh, ascent yesterday, we, we, we just kept running into them, yeah. one after another after another. And, and that's why, you know, given that they had the same orientation, uh, kind of north-south, um, I, I didn't think they were dikes, which, which, but, but rather this concept of a sill, or just a lava flow that's been eroded on either side. Someone wrote in that the sonar talk is reminding them of when they worked with uh, radar sam satellite imagery. So you get a nice view of the porch there. <laughs> We're at 852 meters depth right now. Just exercising uh, the cameras? Uh? No, I'm uh, <laughs> getting some video for the uh, manufacturer and uh, for Josh. And uh, trying to get these set up back to uh, where we have them. So if I look down here, um, with the, uh, the porch has, um, we can kind of pin it, mm -hmm. kind of like you can yep. your receiver hitch. So right. it is in or out further and uh, we have the cameras just so they are slightly protected <laughs> yeah they're they're indeed uh, protected and, and they the manips are folded in uh, both the manips are mm -hmm. uh, 180 degrees in that one's still holding the knife yeah, there say the knife is still there yeah, yeah the jaws are <laughs> locked on the knife so <laughs> don't want to lose my knife and the uh, craft is stowed inboard, so with the cameras uh, pushed out just past the manips and uh, almost even with the porch, uh, we're able to uh, get unobstructed 180 degree uh, video. Yeah, and which of the so two which of the two manipulators do you prefer? So can we pause for a second? Uh, sure. We're just about done with a ship move uh would you like to proceed further or do you want to call it soon well we have we're supposed to be on deck 20 hundred um we're at 800 meters now 860 meters yeah so that's not that long an ascent okay right? so, so keep going we, i think we can keep going you know. okay roger uh let's we're it's gonna not, do it's not just the ascent though we have to cover the ground we want to cover the ground so right so I so think we can go on a little more. Let's go on right to the watch change. That's probably a good time to, to okay. change modes. Yeah, that'll be good for me to go down and yeah. be off watch to process some of this. Yeah, so another 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a slight heading change with the ship. Copy. And so why don't you, can you do, you're going to love this, Dan. Can you change your heading about one or two to de one degrees one degree every second yeah can do i have a button exactly yeah you got a button so you just got to one mississippi yeah we did that two before, mississippi. yeah we did 
to zero four five. I gotta set my heading to one degree increments. Yeah. I thought you were just gonna ask him to change his heading one degree. I, I was really well, I, I was really impressed by that request. I said now that, I wanna that, make a that nice that smooth is, curve. Yeah, no I, I thought that would be high accuracy if if, 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 if a one degree change but, in heading meant something to uh, you. So the way this auto XY works, it as I change my heading it'll still keep this uh, bearing. Okay. It maintains bearing and changes heading. Yeah. yeah I'll have to double tap to uh, That's get fine. to change the bearing. That's fine. You, uh, you ready? All right, yeah, I'm gonna put in the ship move too. All right. Bridge, bridge nav, 480 meters, zero, four, five. <laughs> uh, you can actually just keep Herc centered up where. Yeah, and if you want, you can slowly work Herc back in line with Argus. Uh, uh, Norb. What did you. Because, uh, yeah, there's no particular feature to see right now, so just you can. Getting centered up on the track is fine. Right we got a little bit of a ridge over there that we're seeing, but. Yeah, the, I mean, if we look at the. At the the lower res bathymetry shows that we're we're just hovering on the ridge between two little. Yeah. Uh, um, I lost the plot after change one second at a time to the bearing was. Uh, zero four five. Zero four five. Right. down for me if I please. I'm getting them too far ahead of you there. When we talk about Herc's heading, are we talking about the way it's pointing or the way it's moving? The way it's pointing. And yeah. We're but trying to we're trying to make those the same ultimately but right now, but, but yeah. But sometimes you're moving in a different direction than it's heading. That's right. Yeah. Uh, come down another five, yeah. I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna have to come out of Gonna hold, kind of hold position here for a minute. That's fine. Things are coming out pretty good, so. Yeah, no, you, only have, I don't you won't even have to clean that data. <laughs> no, the Norbit data is so clean. The about all we have to we get fuzzy stuff on the edges, but yeah. it's a one pass survey, so I mean. Just cut off the edge. Yeah, just cut off the edge. Okay, should be able to. The one thing that in. you do have to do is with the barrel away, you get it doesn't really like to do equidistant mm -hmm. beam spacing. No. So you do get sparse near the edges unless you're riding down a bowl like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm moving again, but I'll let. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a decent turn. Yeah, it, it actually it didn't make I got too a much little, of a mess. I got a little tail jerk there, and it pulled it back once. But yeah, I mean that's okay. It it happens. Uh, you can turn all your lights back on. That's what's weird me out with that screen. I keep looking at it and I do the double take and I hate that. Thank you. All right. On the move again. Yeah, even in this low res map, you can still see quite a bit. Yeah. I think that's a survey artifact from heaving around. Yeah.
So do you have any sort of motion compensation at all? Because the Herc doesn't really bounce around too much. Uh, Okay. No, there's no not not you, you in, not in any, terms of feedback to the multi beam. No. Yeah, you don't have. I mean, I, there's yeah. no inertial motion sensor associated with it. With, uh, yeah, right. I mean, we have a full nav solution, obviously, to plot the points, but sure, we're no, not no. we're not stabilizing the beams. Yeah. Um, you can pipe. Uh, you can roll compensate it, but with the I don't know that doesn't it doesn't do you a whole lot of good with the super wide array and whatever. So. So, uh, some of the Norbits will do pitch compensation. Oh, actually, this will be interesting. There's ship for scale. Oh, nice. So what we're doing right now is we're mapping um, pretty pretty much till the end of the shift, right, Larry? Yeah. We're gonna yeah, keep mapping, and, and then uh, the next um, group is gonna explore what we have mapped. Some interesting points there. I feel like the highlights for this watch were going to be so chaotic. Um, I, I did lots of highlights. <laughs> um, Sloan was not in those highlights. <laughs> Jonathan, did you see the picture that Jonathan sent on the chat? I did. It was <laughs> lovely. He sent a he sent a picture of a uh, drama. Of, yeah, of the drama going on in the control <laughs> van while Atalanta was stuck, and then. Our beloved slow mo just right there in the there. middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's been it's been all blue and yeah. then chaos. Like that's <laughs> those and are then the all two blue. modes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course the lovely Norbit. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be some great conversation. <laughs> Atalanta getting stuck <laughs> and and Norbit. And I feel like that's just Oh, and of course the the grenadier fish. Yeah, and I would like to point out that Jonathan was actually adjusting slow mo's lighting, so people would get a better view of him. So I don't think he has the right to make fun of slow mo being in the middle of the drama. <laughs> slow mo is the drama. <laughs> Lots of ratfish, rat tailfish. We're diving until 8 p.m. local time, right? We're supposed to be on deck at, huh? I think we're supposed to be on deck at, at, okay. at 20 hundred, but I think that was my understanding. On deck. And we're we're gonna go till just about the watch change, and then we'll switch into the we'll go out of the mapping mode and switch into the photogrammetry mode and start coming up. We've seen lots of interesting features in the multi beam, so hopefully we can have a path that'll bring us past those and have something interesting to take a picture of.
We have a question. Uh, uh, is the sonar on the ship or on the ROV? Yeah, the sonar we've been talking about is on the ROV, and it's not very large. It's only about 50 centimeters or so, the, the, the Norbit. Um, we, there's a, a similar in how it works, but much, much larger um, example of the same kind of sonar mounted on the ship, except the one on the ship is many meters long. Um, and uh, it's mounted on the hull of the ship. And so that's what's used for deep water. It's a much lower frequency, and that lower frequency can travel much further. So the deep water multi-beam, the one that's on the ship, operates at a center frequency of about 30 kilohertz, so 30,000 cycles per second. And it can map to water depths of five, 6,000 meters. And uh, the one that's mounted on the ROV, on HERC, um, operates at a frequency of 400 kilohertz, so more than 10 times yep. the frequency, and so it can't. It can only 200, me 200 yeah, meters. 200 meters or so. Uh, although we're seeing a 300 meter swath here, so. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, but not. Yeah, total. So 150 meters to either side. Yeah. So that's yeah. That checks. Yeah, and but what you gain is much much higher resolution. So here we're. We're resolving at the scale of tens of centimeters when, with the multi beam sonar on the ship, we can resolve, depending on the water depth, at scales of tens of meters. So everything is a trade off the, the range versus the resolution. Uh, someone commented that after that nail biting intense episode a few hours back, this is very soothing. <laughs> yeah. Screensaver simulator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, and I think we could all use it, particularly Dan. <laughs> Wake me up when we get there. see on your video uh, feed three, um, the map that the Norbert has made now, this nice little valley, the blue part being kind of a valley, and, and the green part coming down from the top, the red, the top of the ridge, coming down a little steeper, and then into this, into this valley. And those black horizontal areas are, are places that we suspect are outcropping rock that are blocking the sound. And so as we come up, we'll be examining those. We'll probably do this for just another few minutes in terms of the mapping mode. And then we'll uh, turn around and come up uh, close to the bottom in a, in a photogrammetry mode. 
we also saw a very, very steep wall, and uh, we'll see if they can capture what might be on that wall. Uh, if you could zoom out, uh, Chris, on the Norbit, mm -hmm. uh, so Chris, we can you, show Dan the Yeah, if you can zoom out, let Dan see the, the mapping you've yeah. done. Okay, great. Thank you. Looks like the next shift is coming in. Yeah, so, um, um, so you'll have some interesting stuff to look at. Now. Yeah. I'll talk we'll to you guys around, tomorrow. We'll get down into the photogrammetry mode. Right. And a number of these areas where there are gaps, and you see, yeah. uh, uh, Taylor, and if you point up to that big, yeah. right. that, that one, there's a vertical wall. So see if we can capture that, and all these all these are probably outcrops. And see if we can capture that on the way back up. All right. Okay. So sounds exciting. Yeah, it's going to take a while to swing, right? So, All right. Bridge, bridge, nav, hold position. SPL check. One, two, check, check. Hello everyone watching on Nautilus Live. This is Daniela Griffey. I'm taking over for Ali as our the Science Communication Fellowship. So right now we're in the middle of shift change. Once everyone kind of gets settled in, we'll start with introductions.
Loud and clear, boss. Is everyone settled in for a round of introductions? All right, so I'll start off with myself. My name's Daniela Griffey. I'm Science Communication Fellow on board on Nautilus. On my day job, I am a high school teacher at Radford High School located in Honolulu. We're really close to Pearl Harbor. So we, at my school, we have a big population of military students aboard, as well as a lot of local kids as well um, at the high school, I teach marine science and AP environmental science. Um, my background before becoming a teacher is I worked as a marine biologist for 10 years. A lot of my work was up in Alaska doing fisheries biology work, but I did a little bit of work over in um, Australia and Papua New Guinea as well. Um, but let's throw it on over to Zach. All right. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach Taylor. I am here in the data logger position, so I will be keeping notes of everything interesting we see today, whether it's structures of the reef um, or different species and um, identifications. Uh, that's my main role. Um, my full-time job right now is finishing up grad school, um, where my work focuses on using remote underwater video systems uh, to uh, basically develop new ways to observe uh, the near shore resources, so whether it be fish, um, it's what I'm specifically do, uh, specifically doing right now, um, but also it's going to give us some benefits long term as well um, as we just gain all this data. So um, very excited to be here on the Nautilus. This is this is a great opportunity, really pushing the limits of all technology. Um, so being a part of this um, has been amazing. Um, and yeah. Thank you. All right, Dan. Hello, I'm Dan Dietz. I'm from the Office of Naval Research, and I'm the watch leader for the next four hours while we go and explore new things that would, um, are on the bottom here. And I guess my job here is to really take a look at the dive plan and make sure that we're progressing along. But if we see anything of interest, to take that opportunity to explore, because that's what we do here. Yeah, and we have a special treat. We are being joined by Rachel. Hi everyone, I am uh, Rachel Simon, longtime listener, first time caller here on uh, SBL and Nautilus Live. Um, I am actually, I am a data engineer sitting in the Science One position and um, my role, so I'm actually one of the programmers who's, uh, you know, actually running the Triclops uh, immersive wide field camera array during uh, this cruise here where we're testing that system. And the code I'm working on is it's actually in uh, near real time, we're actually pulling all of the video and the still images that we create um, while, the, while the, the Triclops is running on the ROV and while the ROV is actually exploring. And right now, that's the just the start of a very long pipeline. Uh, we currently have an entire team that's working down in the data lab. And um, during some of our previous dives, you might well have seen some of those models projected. I think we had a couple of them up on SAT-3 on the, over the last couple dives. So, uh, you know, our role as programmers is, is part of this overall, uh, this overall chain where we're actually, we're taking um, this ROV that is exploring the seafloor and we're actually turning it into an immersive computer model. So we have, the, you know, this capability to really truly explore the ocean floor in 3D. So it's, uh, you know, it's the code that makes it possible. Yes, that co um, one of the models is still being uh, shown on the live. So I challenge all of you guys at home. Rachel is a wealth of knowledge. Ask her a lot of questions. We'll see if we can get her to answer some of them for us. And we'll go on over to Travis next. Hi, everyone. I'm Travis Courtney. And I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Marine Sciences at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez. And I'm here to basically follow up on that beautiful pipeline that uh, Rachel has been developing and just described to to use the imagery and see what we can learn about the seafloor. So uh, we're really interested in any potential gradients of uh, biological communities with depth uh, and how that leads to provisioning of structure. So. My Let me just, uh, sorry, I'll just interrupt right there. Yep. Um, we're all set up up here, so we're just um, awaiting on instruction from the back row. Um, 
our current plan is to descend down to the bottom. We have not gone all the way to waypoint five. We're just past waypoint four, but I think because of the time loss, because of the um, uh, the situation we encountered earlier, we our intent, uh, unless you correct me, is to go down to the seafloor now and then uh, track a line back up the slope. Yeah. So uh, thanks, thanks, Rennie. Uh, sure. I, I think that that's that's what I was told. So let's uh, send down, and because we had the map that uh, Norv has created, um, if you start seeing any targets in that Norv's map that you want to go to, um, well, let's just go find some new things. Uh, some nice craters, some sills, um, any good coral outcroppings. Uh, let's just go take the time to explore and find the new things out there. Okay, sounds great. Uh, K2 is downstairs. He's flipping that over right now so I can get it up on our nav screens. For now, we do have the real-time Norbit up there um, to look at, but for now, we will descend. Um, I'm gonna, as soon as you come out of Auto XY, let me know, I'll do a DVL reset. All right, I'll do a quick reset there. There we go, our orientation's good there. Um, so you have the slope uh, behind you, pretty much. Um, so it'll be going to the southwest, will be upslope. Sorry to interrupt you there, Travis, just wanted to get things rolling. All good. I'm excited to see what we can explore, so just building on a little bit what uh, Dan is talking about, um, we're really interested in sort of these uh, structures and outcroppings uh, along this wall. So yesterday we saw sort of anywhere there was a big sill outcropping, we saw lots of life, uh, corals and crinoids sort of gathering on that, using that as a structure to find themselves some food. And so that's really my specialty is, is thinking about corals, the habitat they provide and the services um, that they provide to ecosystems and also humans. And so usually I work in shallow uh, coral reef systems and this is a, a fun foray into the deep sea for me. Uh, my other hat is looking at coastal water quality, so a little bit uh, of a diverse train. Uh, happy to talk about any of those things as we're cruising along on our dive here and looking forward to hopefully seeing some cool outcroppings and, and corals, especially now that we have this extra guidance from the Norbit model so we can uh, target some of those more interesting features uh, that were sort of interspersed in the, the rock wall from yesterday's dive. All right, thank you, Travis. And then let's head on up to the front row here. Um, Rennie, do you want to take us away? Uh, sure, just one section, second operationally. Um, just looking at our Atalanta scanning sonar there. It seems that we're facing north and we have some terrain to the east, according to that. I'm curious about that tracking with what we're seeing once we get down there. That doesn't seem right to me. Seems like the other way, doesn't it? Let me double check the settings here. Sorry, stand by on that. Um, display control head for Atalanta is set to down. Your heading is north. Right, am I, am I seeing, am I, am I misunderstanding? There's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to understand, right? Because Herc has a slope coming up to the left. Yeah. Wait, you have also, you, you, you've got, yeah. Yeah, Let's see what we got. Oh, these are, no? Don't know. Let's find out what happens here. All right, so it looks like that is Hercules. Let me switch that, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> are you seeing that? So I think that that, Atalanta, you've maintained heading, correct? Yeah? So I think Hercules is on the left. Let me flip that first. Then we'll get the, our divisions correct, because those are incorrect. Give me a second here. Roger. Um, 
Let me get the divisions here. Uh, typically we'll do 20 on you, 10 on you. Hmm, still doesn't make sense. Uh, all right, so I think we, <laughs> we got this flipped, but now that one seems like it's backwards, doesn't it? Oh, that makes sense. I see what happens. Give me a second. This one should be down. Apply. And then this one should be up. Somebody switched it all. Now let's see if that makes any sense. All right, Atalanta, that's looking more realistic. <laughs> and Hercules, I think that just flipped the left and right, so I think we're okay. Huh, we'll have to figure out why that happened. Seems like we're sorted now, yeah? Okay. Uh, uh, rough bearing up slope will be 225, something like that. And you can see on Norbit that scan in front of you there. Uh, 